Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're talking about some more Ryzen 5 3600 leaks. What well, looks like, not even really leaks, they're just published review <laughs> way ahead of uh, NDA. But first, uh, if you haven't entered my GPU giveaway for the ASRock RX 590, definitely go over and check that out. Uh, I'll be my next video I make on the channel will be announcing the winner so if you want to get in at the last minute definitely go check out that video so it looks like a uh, Spanish review site has decided to uh, publish a Ryzen 5 3600 uh, review with benchmarks way ahead of NDA which is on uh, July 7th so this is a, a WCCF tech article and we can see at the start it reads the first review of the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 processor has been published by, and I'm not even going to attempt that. The review takes a look at various performance aspects of AMD's 7 nanometer uh, based Ryzen 5 3600, which is the entry level chip that will hit, re uh, hit retail at uh, 200 US dollars, making it one of the best options for mainstream gaming PCs. Reads on. While the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 doesn't go on sale till 7th of July, the Spanish media outlet has let out the performance figures in both general CPU tests and gaming titles. The AMD Ryzen 5 3600 is the most affordable option in the entire third generation Ryzen lineup, but features some really nice specifications. And we can see the specs there if you are not aware. Now this, of course, there will be more Ryzen CPUs further down the line. Uh, but as of launch that it will be the uh, cheapest one of the new 7 nanometer CPUs. So you can see there for the 3600, uh, 3.6 on the base, 4.2 on the boost. Obviously a 6 core, 12 thread, nice fat cache there. Uh, PCIe 4.0 support which is good and a good price point. Uh, Intel is apparently going to be dropping its CPU prices by about 15% but even if they do that the 3600 will still be uh, a, a decent price there. So the Ryzen 5 3600 is a CPU that a lot of you guys are obviously interested in. Uh, from the specifications and everything that AMD has said so far, it definitely has caught a lot of people's attention as sort of a very, very good value for money CPU. But let's keep reading the article and talk about the testing then. The processor was tested on an X470 Aorus Gaming 7 Wi-Fi motherboard. I actually have that motherboard with G-Skill Flarex DDR4 memory, uh, 16 gigs at 3200 uh, 3200 MHz, that's the exact same memory like what I'm using, and a RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition, so that's definitely going to get out of the way of the CPU. It featured the reference heat sink for cooling, which is the Wraith Stealth, the little one, but it's still, that's a decent cooler. Temperatures were 40C in idle, 75C in load, that's just fine, you won't see any throttling at that. The power consumption is stated to sell around 125 watts in idle and 360 watts at load for the entire PC. Remember, entire PC, not just the CPU. The difference between the Ryzen 5 2600 and the 3600 was around 55 watts. At the same time, the difference between the Ryzen 5, uh, the, between the 2700X and the 3600 was around 65 watts. So that's decent there. So let's take a look at these benchmarks. First is Cinebench. Uh, Cinebench R15, so this is the multi-threaded test, you can tell by the numbers. That's a really good score there. I will say, compared to my own testing, that those numbers do seem lower than what they should be, especially the 9900K. Mine was uh, a bit over 2000, so that's a little bit low there, a bit low for the 2700X as well. Uh, so not really sure what's going on there, but if we look at the 3600, that's a solid result matching the 1700X and a decent way ahead of uh, the 9700K. Next test was the uh, W prime test. Uh, it's a decent score again, beating the 8700K. That's that's fine. Uh, yeah, looks good to me. Still the 9900K uh, doing a decent job there. Uh, if you compare it to the 2600, that is a, a decent increase there for sure. We have another W prime test there and a, a similar result, uh, 26, 2700X putting in a, a good job there, but once again, it beats the 8700K. We go to the X264 benchmark. Uh, this is a fine result once again. It seems to be matching the 1700X and similar to the 8700K. 
a, a decent upgrade there over the 2600 but of course the 2700x and uh, the 9900k pull a decent gap the cinebench r15 single thread results also seem a little bit strange to me the 2700x results look about right they usually score around that 176 that's fine the 9900k seems a bit low uh they usually come in around 215 around there give or take a few points uh so 196 would be very decent there though for the 3600 uh, i don't think anybody would complain about that and then we have a cinebench r20 as well and we see another good result there sort of slotting itself in between the 9900K and the 2700X. So those are all synthetic results. So what do we make of them then? Well, the 3600 is looking really solid. I think you guys would agree. Uh, I've used Cinebench for years now, and those are some really good results. Although, as I said, it seems like the Intel numbers were a little bit low from what most people would see with them. But that being said, even comparing it with the AMD numbers, it was looking really good there. So let's take a look at some games. In Total War, Warhammer 2, you can see there it's sort of butting up against the ceiling alongside the 6700K and the 2700X, although the 9900K does have a little bit of a lead there. Over in Final Fantasy 15, once again, sort of slotting itself between the 9900K and the 2700X, uh, still 10 frames behind the 9900K, but when you consider the price difference between these two CPUs, uh, that's definitely not a bad result. Far Cry 5. You can see it's actually got a pretty good jump up there you know that's like 20 frames over the 2700x that's impressive although that's still uh quite far behind the 9900k uh, which definitely pulls far ahead in far cry 5. assassin's creed odyssey this one looks like it's more gpu bound you can see it's pretty much matching the 2700x uh, only a little bit behind the 9900k 3D Mark Port Royale, uh, it's all sort of butting up against the ceiling there once again, and Time Spy is a similar affair there. In uh, Firestrike though, you can see that it's once again in between the 2700X and the 9900K, and that's a solid result, uh, so I, I, you definitely can't like sneeze at that. And the Superposition Benchmark at 4K, that's, that's, you know, it's a 4K benchmark, so what do you expect? They're all just... Uh, butting up against the GPU and it uh, looks like heaven is a similar fare there so it's mainly just the first sort of uh, four games I would say that you can really draw any sort of good conclusion from in terms of these gaming benchmarks the other ones that just seem like it was just hitting uh, a GPU limit so with all that being said what do I make of these benchmarks well with both the synthetic and the gaming ones it's looking really good for the 3600 now we do need to take some things into consideration it is running on an X470 motherboard, which is a pretty good gigabyte motherboard, it has to be said. But it still is on X470. And this will be running a very early BIOS. If you remember back, if you guys can remember, uh, when X370 launched, like it took them a while to get it sorted. And we saw quite a few improvements uh, with BIOS updates with X370. It was a Quite a mess at launch um, and we saw a similar thing with x470 so from the engineers I've spoken to at the different companies can't name names they've told me that x570 has been um, which words should I use difficult uh, they've been on the bias front they've been having uh, issues here and there and they say there's it, it will be a process you know over from when it's launched and over the months after uh, x570 and Ryzen 3000 launches there you will see uh, decent improvements there in terms of the biases with x570 so yeah it was on x470 uh, also memory wise I think they could have definitely cranked a bit more out of it they could have taken up to like 3600 or higher uh, if they really wanted AMD is recommending 3600 megahertz memory to be used with the X570s and Ryzen 3000 so that could be a factor as well but even with all that being said these results are looking really promising like if you're someone on a budget and you just want to spend like this the 3600 you know two hundred dollars on a CPU then this is going to be an awesome deal. And this is it running at stock speeds. You know, to be fair, the other CPUs were running at stock speeds also. But you could easily buy a cheap air cooler and 
uh, or maybe if you have a friend that bought one of the higher end Ryzen CPUs like a 3800X or something like that and they put a liquid cooler on it, you might be able to grab their Wraith Prism or maybe you can go to a shop and they might have one out the back that you can buy for really cheap. And if you chucked a, a Wraith Prism on that, you know, the big AMD stock cooler, you'd be able to overclock it and uh, we don't know how well they overclock, but I assume they would do it somewhat decently like the previous generations. Uh, at least you, you can hold more, you can hold the clock speeds up higher then the performance would be even better with it. This is just shaping out to be like, it, this 3600 is just looking like an absolute beast to me. If these numbers are to be believed, and I have no reason to not believe them, because even though I said some of them seemed a little bit low to me, they don't seem completely like out of the ordinary or anything like that. Uh, so yeah, it's looking really good for AMD with Ryzen 3000 and this 3600 especially is looking really really good but that's enough out of me I'm gonna throw it to you guys so what do you make of these benchmarks uh what do you think of the ryzen 5 3600 is it a cpu you're interested in uh maybe you're interested in another ryzen cpu i'd like to know your opinions in the comment section down below definitely let me know as i said earlier if you haven't entered my asrock gpu giveaway then definitely go and do that and as always i'll see you guys next time